Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll have a look at the latest from the UK Met Office run have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days as we have continued bouts of showers um, heavy showers thunderstorms perhaps uh, and some more persistent bands over the next couple of days before it does look like towards the weekend the start of next week will be turning much drier and we'll have a look at the high pressure prospects for the longer term with the GFS, GM, Eastern DF and the Ensemble. Still a lot of uncertainty with the orientation of that high pressure system, whether it's going to be northerly winds, how cold that northerly wind could be, or perhaps that northerly wind never fully arrives and we stay in a more warmer air mass, being temperatures could get up into the mid-20s. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link is in the description. So if you start on the live radar, you can see we have had a big rash of heavy showers and thunderstorms today. Now, I have said over the last couple of days there was the potential for pop-up pop storms, and you can see there are some thunderstorms on here. Um, they have been coming up and dissipating very quickly over the course of an hour or two. So they're not long-living storms, they're not long-track storms, and they're not widespread in nature. Like, they are very localised. Widespread showers, but localised cells. You see, the biggest cell at the moment really is over South East England, towards the Kent area. Some very heavy rain, hail, lightning within this small line of thunderstorms. Um, and elsewhere, you can see a lot of these little reds and oranges, which is big cumulonimbus cloud, big updrafts, seeing heavy rain, torrential rain, hail, lightning with that. And we've seen a, a lot of these showers popping up, as I said, coming up and dissipating. So not your typical sort of southerly plume thunderstorms where we can get them into big bands um, where we can see se severe developments within these storms but they're still um, where they do hit can be quite severe uh, luckily they are moving through quite quickly it's not lasting too long not giving any uh, too much rainfall but could give a, a good 15 20 minute light show potentially a bit of hail and torrential rain they are now clearing further eastwards so um, it is drying up further westwards, but there's still plenty of showers across Scotland, some heavier showers breaking out there, and across Ireland and Northern Ireland. And you can see the next persistent band of rain is heading our way. Um, weather front that's going to be moving in over the next few hours or so. If we do have a look at the temperatures, now you can see, because we've got much more of a westerly feel today, those temperatures are not rising really at all uh, mostly yellows and a few tinges of orange on here uh, but mostly yeah, yellows and blues symbolic of mid to low teens and around that sort of 13 to 15 degree mark maybe 16 17 18 degrees in a few spots escaping those showers um, and you can see there's quite a widespread picture across Europe as well. Cooler air mixing in and that hot air is being pushed back right towards the Mediterranean, southeast Europe and towards Africa. So much cooler conditions coming in for northwest Europe. And this is the theme over the coming days. Now, if we do go over to the Met Office website and just have a look at the latest from the lightning radar. Now, you can see this is 450. These are the lightning, latest lightning strikes. Any orange strikes are current. You can see uh, this is T minus minutes. So any purples and blues are in the last 45, sort of 40 to 60 minutes. More lighter blues and greens, more 10 to 30 minutes. And oranges and yellows are in the last 5 or 10 minutes or so. And you can see that's intense cells down across southeast England towards Kent. Another one into Canterbury area. And then some into the Midlands, heading off near Skegness as well. But these are not the only thunderstorms. If we do run back a whole hour, you can see there are other widespread thundery outbreaks as well. And we spread back another hour beyond that, back to 250. And you can see more big sort of pop-up storms. Nothing crazy by any means, but still, if you're under these storms, you'll know about it. Uh, and then again, run back another hour to uh, 1.50, and you can see again, big storms in around the London area into South East England as well, so quite widely across the Midlands, East Anglia into the South East. These pop-up thunderstorms, um, a little bit more intense than I, ha I had uh, initially in anticipated. So um, sorry for not perhaps forecasting these a little bit better. I had said there were going to be heavy showers around. I just didn't know there'd be this much lightning activity within these storms. So we'll have a look at, at what the prospects are for tomorrow uh, and in the coming days as well. So we still have got a quite a bit of instability around. But for the time being, we do have some heavy showers and storms still breaking out and could continue over the next few hours, but it's likely to diminish as the sun starts to set. We lose that sort of trigger for these showers and storms.
Now, if we do run, uh, no, if we do have a look at the UK melt off run, have a look at the precipitation temperature over the next five days, you can see there was persistent bands of rain earlier this morning, very early this morning. But as that band cleared over the course of the afternoon, you can see heavy scattered showers appearing. You can see some red showing here on the UK Met Office run, uh, but in reality, they're actually more intense than the models were forecasting. Very interesting seeing that. And that's why in the last few videos, I've had, had said there's possibility of heavy showers and the odd thunderstorm. And we saw quite a few thunderstorms today, as we just saw much more than the models are showing. So a bit more convection in reality. Uh, and those showers do diminish over the course of the evening. And you see that weather front pushing through. And by uh, rush hour tomorrow, it'll be through many western areas, thicker cloud and showers breaking out behind it through tomorrow afternoon. Doesn't look like it's as t intense in terms of showers, as there's more thicker cloud around, so less convection getting going, but still could be some showers through tomorrow afternoon. Best places really across Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, into the West Midlands, Northwest England and Wales, looking pretty decent. Elsewhere, still could be alright, but a few more showers around. As we head through Thursday evening, another band of precipitation moving through through Thursday afternoon. Just some showers across northern Scotland. But for most other areas, it's pretty dry. There does look like there's going to be a little band of rain across the North Midlands into parts of Wales. And to the south of that, just some thicker cloud. Beyond that into Friday, it does look like a reasonably dry day in the south as high pressure is starting to build in. And by Saturday... Some thicker cloud further north and some drizzle as we start to see a bit of a northerly wind come in. This is something we do need to keep an eye on with any northerly or easterly wind, regardless of the temperature. Coming in off the cooler North Sea at this time of year, we can see low cloud and drizzle appear. So Saturday quite dry, and then you start to see a few showers potentially across the North Sea coast, heading in with that north to northeasterly wind. Again, you look at the pressure, you can see those northerly winds starting to come in. And it'll be very interesting to see how that does develop over the next couple of weeks. Now, if we do have a look at the two meter temperature, uh, you can see, again, this afternoon, temperatures peaking in around that sort of 17, 18, maybe 19 degree mark, but more widely, sort of 13 to 15 degrees. Tomorrow, temperatures will once again rise perhaps to 17, 18, 19 degrees, maybe for a more widespread area, but again, still widely, sort of 14 to 16 degrees. Very similar again into Thursday, could see a little bit more maybe of 18, 19 degrees, but again, more widely sort of 14, 15, 16, 17 degrees. So not too bad, but nothing particularly warm. And by Friday, maybe a slightly larger area increasing by the day of sort of 18 to 20 degrees, but still many areas trapped in that sort of 15 to 17 degrees. 17 degree mark and by saturday we're starting to see that northerly wind influence you can see nine or ten degrees out in the north sea and you can see across east anglia right towards the coast only 11 12 13 degrees you come a bit more inland 19 20 degrees and this is the theme we're going to be seeing perhaps over the next week or so still uncertainty with exact orientation of the high pressure system and how long or how cool those northerly winds do become uh, and can make a massive difference to surface temperatures. Conditions still look very dry. Perhaps it could change the amount of, uh, cloud amounts and maybe any drizzle or showers. It still does, though, generally look dry. It's just the temperatures from a direct north to northeasterly wind this time of year. It can still be really chilly in around low teens, maybe only 9, 10 degrees. Whereas if we did see it veer more easterly or southeasterly, it could get temperatures up into low 20s. So, yeah, big, big differences could be seen from very subtle shifts in the wind direction. So if we do have a look at the longer term, have a look at the EGFS, GM, ESMDF and the ensembles, you can see westerly winds moving in at the moment. That's going to continue over the next couple of days. Four high pressure build in towards Friday and Saturday. And you see initially it's a bit of an orderly wind, but the GFS doesn't make too much of it. And we sort of have high pressure sit over the top of us. And this will be quite a warm high pressure system with the winds veering a bit more south to southeasterly. Um, so it would be a massive warm spell. Those ice bars are not particularly tight coming up from the south. But they are in off the near continent, which will be a warmish direction. That continues and perhaps seeing some cooler air coming round the edge towards the end of the run. But generally for the majority of the run, the GFS looks pretty decent. Now if you run it back and have a look at the upper air temperatures, you'll be able to see it's warm and dry. Quite a nice summery picture. No heat wave by any means, but warm, dry, slightly above average temperatures. So if you see westerly wind moving in, high pressure building in with a 5 degree ice firm, which is not massively warm, but not cold by any means. Pretty decent getting temperatures, as I said, up to the high teens, low 20s, very widely, maybe even mid 20s for some. 
And as that high pressure continues to build in, we see 10 degree ice firm potentially move in. Yes, beyond day 10, we're starting to veer some slightly chillier air maybe down the far east coast, but still seeing between 5 and 10 degrees at 850 HPA. So perhaps the models are trending slightly more towards a warmer solution today. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. And right at the end of the run, yes, some cooler air starting to veer in from the northeast. But for the majority of that run, the GFS will be very dry, bone dry almost probably um, for some, and would be quite warm as well. Nothing drastic, as I said, but up towards the low to mid-20s perhaps for areas, especially under the centre of the high-pressure system where we're not seeing too much mixing of air. So if we do now have a look at the GM, see how that does compare up till day 10. You can see again, westerly winds over the coming days, high pressure building in, a bit more of a northeasterly flow. Um, high pressure is still there, and right towards the end of the run, a proper northerly wind setting up. So yes, it has hints of high pressure sitting over the top of the UK, but definitely has more of a north or northeasterly flow, especially at the end of the run. Again, if we do run it back and have a look at the air masses, you can see again westerly winds over the coming days, high pressure building in, and you can see warm in the west, but on the east coast, much chillier towards that zero degree isothermal area. For high pressure does top a little bit, bring some temporary warm air for a cool air mass moves in from the north. Uh, but very warm air just to our south, so very close to getting some proper warmth like on the GFS run, but not quite getting there. You look at the temperature deviation, real clash of air masses, very warm across Europe, 10 degrees above average getting towards 8 to 10 degrees below average just to north of Scotland into Scandinavia and the North Sea. So very much uh, sort of colliding air masses here, very uncertain because you can see at times the UK is a couple of degrees below av above average in the west but a couple of degrees below average in the east, all very uh, on a tight balance. Um, we'll just have to see really what wins out. But I must stress though, it is looking very dry. The only sort of subtle change we're seeing here is perhaps slightly more drizzle, slightly more thicker cloud um, and slightly lower temperatures, maybe three or four degree lower temperatures more widely and perhaps locally more than that along that east coast. Now, if we do finish uh, for the longer range, have a look at the ECMWF, you can see westerly winds, high pressure building in. But the ECMWF is very much more of a cooler run, at least initially, for the high pressure really goes far northwards, we actually start to put up a very unstable south to southwesterly flow, a very hot and thundery sort of spell. So very different from the three runs today, very similar in terms of higher pressure dominating, but GFS has it over the top of the UK, GM has it pushing northwards with more of an easterly wind veering in, and Eastern Relief has it proper northern blocking with little cut off lows, bringing in eventually south to south easterly winds, south slash southwesterly winds, uh, depending on the exact positioning of the low pressure system, bringing very, very warm conditions and thundery conditions as well. Now, if we do have a look at those 850 HPA temperatures, you can see not too warm at the moment. Warm conditions perhaps coming in for the weekend, but slightly chilly down the east coast. And we stay in that cool air mass initially, very chilly perhaps for the start of next week. Uh, you look at the temperature deviation, well below average, 4 to 6 degrees below average. But uh, if we do run back to the upper air temperatures, you see eventually that low pressure moves out into near, uh, near um, Atlantic. We start to pull up south to southeast the winds. Very warm air pushing up from the south. And yes, UK doesn't get absolutely smothered in hot air, but it would fuel showers and thunderstorms similar to the pattern we had last week so very very interesting seeing these three runs today um all of them are very similar with the high pressure in control but very uh, different outcomes towards the surface in terms of temperatures and especially the eastern bf would have very much differing amounts of precipitation as well so if we do have a look at the ensembles, you can see Chile at the moment turning much higher uh, in terms of upper air temperatures towards the end of this working week as we do see a brief sort of southwesterly flow come in and then temperatures just return to around or slightly below average as that high pressure builds in with slightly cooler air coming in from the east. Bit of uncertainty then, some models going really chilly down towards zero degrees at 850 HPA but more today are trending much warmer and you see in the longer term we're generally around or above average, still very dry all the way to the end of May and for the first of 10 days of June. Some precipitation around, but really nothing too significant. Really nice sort of picture for June. Just we need those upper air temperatures to stay in around that average area. We'll see temperatures fly into the low 20s. 
if we do have a look at the sea level pressure, you can see generally still very much uh, higher pressure. Very, uh, none of the ensemble members are going below 1,000 millibars. Very few are going below 1,010 millibars. So high pressure definitely is the theme. And again, if we have a look at the two meters temperatures, you can see, yes, not too warm over the next few days in around that sort of 15 to 18 degree mark. But as we head into next week, those averages return more towards sort of 19, 20 degrees. And of course, when we see sunshine, the ensembles are always underplaying those temperatures a bit. Um, and we're more likely to see low to mid 20s, perhaps in a few areas, but widely in around that sort of 20, 20 to 1, 22 degree mark. If we see those around average to slightly above average, upper air conditions under higher pressure, that's where we could see some pretty decent conditions. Now, if you have a look at the ECMWF ensemble, see how they do compare. Now, you can see they are chilly. Quite a few uh, of them are cold through the last few days of May. So much more certainty from the GF, uh, from the Eastern DF of cooler than average conditions, at least for the last three or four days of May, for returning more towards average for the start of June, around sort of the second, third of June, returning to around average. So very interesting that the Eastern DF ensembles are very much on a cooler spectrum. And you can see through uh, around the sort of the change of the month, much more precipitation as well, and that would be symbolic of a cooler low pressure system coming in from the northeast. So very interesting seeing that. A lot of uncertainty with these uh, with these ensembles. GFS definitely trending slightly warmer. Eastern BF holding at that sort of five degrees below average for the end of May. Again, if we have a look at those sea level pressure, you can see quite a few more are trending lower pressure towards that 1,010 millibars. Not massively low pressure, but lower pressure than what we have at the moment and what we would see throughout the start of June. And that, of course, is that cooler upper air, um, air upper air mass moving in. And if we finish by just having a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see instead of warming trend towards 18, 19 degrees, there's a cooling trend towards 13, 14 degrees. That would be chilly especially with an northerly or easterly breeze that would feel cold indeed next week for end of may early june so we do need to keep an eye on this i do suspect the models will resolve it over the next day or so but um yeah big uncertainty for the start of june or end of may and start of june of course so anyway thanks for watching make sure you stay safe out there if you are going to be infected by any of these showers and storms over the course of the rest of this evening and throughout the coming days as there is likely to be more heavy showers perhaps not quite as many thunderstorms but still heavy showers um but yes do stay safe out there and do keep up to date because there could be some very interesting conditions next week in terms of temperatures could be pretty chilly or could be very warm depending on which model really does win out that's it thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon